Hello wonderful people, I'm PvP Skills and today we're going to take an in-depth look at the Sorcerer class and we're going to show you everything you need to know about Sorceries. And after this video, you'll be receiving a certificate in Sorceries and Magical Arts. A lot of people, a lot of people yearn for that, especially the people from the Pyromancy Studies Department and actually some people hate it like the people from the Dark Sword Spam Studies Department. Putting jokes aside, Sorceries are much more difficult to use this time around. The general philosophy in previous games was to give them very high damage on certain spells. It made PvE an easy endeavor since PvE enemies and monsters, unsurprisingly, barely dodge any spell. And in PvP, it can one-shot you or take more than 90% of your HP in a single hit. But it was very easy to dodge, but that's not so true when playing against more than one person. In Dark Souls 3, it's a different story. Sorceries are more of a tool to just give you an extra edge. However, if you are very committed, you can actually be a pure sorcerer, but it requires you to invest your whole character, like literally. In this video, I will explain everything you need to know about sorceries, then I will show you a couple of builds that you can put in good use. So, without further ado, let's begin. Before I show the build, we have to talk about equipment that influence sorcery damage and other properties. And oh boy, there is a lot, and choosing different combination of these items and spells will result in different sorcery builds and each will have a niche playstyle that fits in a specific role. So here are the things that are very effective with a sorcerer build and you should consider these when rolling with a sorcerer. Let's start with a magic clutch ring, which increases spell damage moderately at about 10-15% to and increases weapon damage as well, but ever so slightly, but when you add up all the other items, it can make a difference on counters. But all these benefits come at a cost, and that is you will receive an extra 10-15% to more damage from incoming attacks. I still think it's worth it on spell heavy builds accompanied with a very high scaling magic weapon. Next up is a Sage Ring. The Dexterity stat decreases spell casting time other than increasing weapon damage of course, and the Sage Ring provides 30 virtual dexterity, which basically means it only decreases spell casting time but excludes the weapon damage increase. The Sage Ring plus 2 increases your virtual dexterity by 40. It is very worth it on most spell casters as faster always means better. The next ring is Young Dragon Ring. It increases sorcery damage by 10%. This ring is one of the weaker rings in this list, but it can be a nice addition when you are going for maximum damage. A better version of the Young Dragon Ring is the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring. It increases sorceries by 20%. What do you need more, my friend? Every sorcerer that is heavily reliant on spellcasting should equip this ring at all times. Another important ring is the Dark Moon Ring. It increases your spell slots by 2. This can prove useful when you want to equip more spells when you have low attunements or maybe you just want to go crazy with all your spells. Hybrid Brills can find this ring very handy. The last ring on this list is the Obscuring Ring. Although most sorcerers will find it difficult to fit this ring in one of their ring slots, it can prove very advantageous when used right. It basically renders you invisible to your opponents from rage. And oh man, the utility on this thing is endless. You can become a stealthy sorcerer which is super fun and adds new ways to surprise your opponents. Next piece of equipment is a headpiece and that is the Crown of Dusk. This item returned from Dark Souls 1. It increases both sorcery damage and weapon damage but is similar to the magic clutch ring in that it boosts sorceries much better than weapon damage increase and decreases about 10% in sorcery damage. Of course, in return, your magic resistance or absorption is decreased. The almost free damage is hard to pass but I have to say, it looks very ugly and it goes against Fashion Souls protocols. Let's start talking about spells that are more effective in general and you should consider some of them in your arsenal. The first one is the Crystal Soul Spear. Has very high damage, homing capabilities, shield penetration, but long casting time and a ton of focus points. But it is one of the best sorceries and that's for sure. Next up is the Farron Flash Sword. It must equip spell. It mimics straight sword but instead of steel you have flash of sorcery. Super badass and is very effective with high intelligence. The speed on this thing is what sells. It can swing faster than straight sword which says a lot. 
This can crush people who keep rolling around you trying to backstab you. It also has weapon properties such as running attacks and backstep attacks. It can be parried though, so beware. Next spell is the Homing Crystal Soul Mass. This spell can be seen in every Dark Souls game and can be found also in Demon Souls. I do hate this spell across the series in general because of its auto hit nature, especially when coupled with lag it can be very annoying. However I can't deny its practicality, it does enormous damage, can be controlled to a certain degree, plus casting other spells while it protects you is a huge plus. The next spell is the Soul Greatsword, a 270 degrees horizontal attack that covers a huge area that's good for attacking multiple enemies and when used in clever ways can screw your opponent's timing. I only recommend it to high intelligence builds as the damage is very low at low intelligence. Great Heavy Soul Arrow is a simple spell, it was never really useful in Dark Souls 1 and 2 but here it's a different story. It's basically like a soul spear but with low focus point or blue bar consumption. You can cast it so many times without worrying about your blue bar and the damage of course is its selling point. I like to couple this with Great Soul Arrow to have a faster alternative, plus having different casting speeds can really catch your enemies off guard. Next up is the Great Farron Dart, one of the most underrated spells in Dark Souls 3. It's one of the fastest spells with the lowest consumption of you know of your blue bar, very effective on finishing off your opponents. I love this spell personally, especially with high intelligence, you can really chip away your opponent's HP from far away, it's very fast, it, it's almost instant, so it's very difficult for people to, uh, to actually predict or roll straight away. Another spell is Soul Stream, it's definitely one of the coolest spells in the game. It's really good in PvE, but pretty horrendous in PvP due to its lack of tracking and aiming, plus its very slow casting speed. Another spell to consider is Affinity. Although it is a dark spell, it is very similar to Homing Crystal Soul Mass, but with more homing capabilities. Another special combo that is very very effective in PvE is the spell Spook and Hidden Buddy. Spook decreases your noise and Hidden Body actually, you know, blends you into the environment, you become semi-invisible and in PvE when you couple both of these spells, you become literally invisible, you can just run across all the enemies, nobody will see you, just run away through the game, make it easy peasy cakewalk. So consider these when you wanna be stealthy in PvE. A sorcerer is a walking prey without his staff, staffs have different spell buffs and casting times. I'm going to mention the best at high intelligence only. There are two staffs on this list and the first one is the Court Sorcerer's Staff. It is one of the best in terms of damage and consistency. The other staff is the Sage's Crystal Staff which has better damage when it's buffed aka it's battle art and that's when you have over 50 intelligence. To be honest after using these two I would say the Court Sorcerer's Staff is the better option in general plus it starts to shine after 40 intelligence only unlike the other staff. The next piece of equipment is a weapon, the Emulation Tender and I have to say, it's my favorite of the bunch. I had the most fun when using this thing. It's a halberd that can cast sorceries with its heavy attacks. This is your best option for weapons that cast sorceries. The spell buff is actually pretty good and the variety it adds negates the loss of damage difference relative to the staffs we mentioned before. Using this with Flash Sword and Soul Great Sword is super cool. You can be very unpredictable and you can perform flashy combos with it. Another essential piece to the Sorcerer build is the Scholar's Candlestick. It's a weapon that increases both magic and dark sorceries by 25%. This is huge, adding this with Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring, Young Dragon Ring, Magic Clutch Ring and the Crown of Dust can make you a monster. Your damage becomes stupidly strong in both PvP and PvE and this weapon must be equipped in either hand in order to get the buff. You want your staff in one hand and the Scholar's Candlestick on the other. This can leave you vulnerable since you can't have a shield but this is, this is the drawback I guess and I think it's worth it on spell reliant builds. Oddly enough this weapon requires 16 faith to wield but thankfully you get the buff regardless of that. You can get the buff even when two handing the weapon. So for example you can have the Emulation Tender on your right hand, two handing it and having the Scholar's Candlestick on your left hand and you still get the buff even when you don't meet the required stats to use the Scholar's Candlestick. 
The last items on this list are weapons with high magic scaling. The first one is the Moonlight Greatsword, which I did a video for it before, so if you want to watch it, check the link in the description. And it also got buffed recently. And the other, and the other weapon is Astora's Greatsword, which has S scaling in intelligence once you infuse it with Crystal Gem. The weapon itself is one of the best weapons in the game and is a great pick for a battle mage. Another options are picking a dexterity weapon if you have a dex intelligence build since you can use the crystal magic weapon buff which is the best buff for intelligence builds. You can use it with a dex weapon, highly scaled dex weapon and you can get great results. On the other hand also you can get any weapon in the game, you just meet its requirement and then infuse it with the row path so you get a lot of physical damage without the stats needed and then buff it with crystal magic weapon and you still become very effective however you become reliant on that spell. So these are all the items that heavily influence your sorcery damage and if you want to find these spells that I mentioned or items make sure to google them or check them on the wiki. Now let's look at the different builds you can achieve with the vast arsenal we just mentioned. Builds are what makes your sorcerer stands out. The most important stats here are the intelligence stat and the attunement stat. The intelligence stat increases your sorcery damage and absorption. When using a pure sorcerer, you should aim your stat or your intelligence stat to be anywhere between 40 minimum and 60 for maximum damage. Note, all builds that are shown will be using the same character which he is a deprived class that means all stats start with 10. You can choose a sorcerer class if you want to be more efficient as a sorcerer. Attunement gives you more attunement slot and increases your focus points or your blue bar. It is basically your source for casting spells and its importance cannot be underestimated. Having between 30 or 40 or even 50 will serve you very well. Just remember to allot your Ash and Estes flask with Andre in Firelink Shrine so you can replenish your blue bar when needed. Another less important stat but still can be very effective is your dexterity stat since it increases your spell casting time. So if you have a lot of dexterity and then you couple that with sage's ring you can cast spells with very high speed and as I said before the faster the better. The first build here goes for the highest damage possible you can inflict using your spells. It uses all the item that increases sorcery damage. The bellowing dragon crest ring, the young dragon ring, the magic clutch ring and both scholar's candlestick and crown of dusk. The second build uses the emulation tender as the main staff. It's basically a battle mage. It's very similar to the first build but with less intelligence. Now the builds that I'm about to show you were made when the game first released so I'm pretty sure they're not optimum but it can give you an idea about the different sorcery builds. So the third build relies on Carter's Chotel and Crystal Magic Weapon. It's more of a melee build and sorceries are there just to give you a bit of an extra edge. The fourth build relies on an infused weapon accompanied with spells. The Astora Greatsword is a very solid choice here. It might even be the best choice due to its S scaling and intelligence. I think this is one of the better builds as you become deadly in both melee and spell casting. The fifth build uses the legendary Moonlight Greatsword. In this video I'm using it before the patch so it's even stronger now. It's very similar to the previous build but instead uses the Moonlight Greatsword. And finally the last build, it's very similar to the first build but uses the Sage's Crystal Staff. When this staff is buffed and your intelligence is over 50, you deal enormous damage. If you are good in micromanaging during fights, this staff can be very lethal indeed. On a final note, never forget that unpredictability as a sorcerer is everything when it comes to PvP. And micromanaging is important of course for both PvP and PvE since you want to be changing spells on the fly, you want to be unpredictable as much as possible. Stamina management is very important since when you use spells you do actually consume some of your green bar and micromanaging this and the blue bar with your spells, with your dodges, with your blocks is what makes a sorcerer successful and makes each sorcerer different from the other. So that's all I have for the sorcerer build, if I missed anything don't forget to mention them in the comments because we do thrive as a community 
and I'll be making a video for pyromancies, faith spells and miracles and dark spells similar to this video so make sure to like and subscribe for that and I'll see you on my next video. Bye bye.